high, beautiful people of the Most High God. So this is a revelation of God that he wants me to talk about the two witnesses. Um, you know, I've made other videos about them, but this is what he wants me to talk about. Um, that people haven't been teaching. That Okay, I'm just going to read it and then I'm going to let you know. Alright? As I go, I'm just going to explain what he wants me to explain to you. All of that. All right, Revelations 11 and 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. All right, these people don't talk about the part that they're clothed in sackcloth. And that means they're going to be repenting to God. They're going to be saving people's souls for God. They just, they just teach about these are the two olive trees. And the two candlesticks standing beside, standing before the God of the whole earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemy, enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this la manner be killed. They only talk about the two witnesses, you know, fire proceeding out of their mouth and them killing people. But they're not just going to be going around f killing people with fire coming out of their mouth. That is not the mission of the two witnesses. They are going to be repenting to God, saving souls to bring them to New Jerusalem, to get them out of the destruction of the heavens and earth. You understand? They're going to be saving souls. Their story, their testimony about their marriage is going to bring people back to God. What they've been through is supposed, their testify, testimony to you. They're going to be delivering people. They're going to be helping people get to New Jerusalem, get to the new heavens and the new earth. They're going to help people get out of this destruction. And with them being able, and then it says, These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. So if anybody is like coming to hurt them while they're teaching, while they're testifying, while they're doing God's work, saving souls testifying teaching the people the word of god letting them understand what has happened and how to deliver them from the things that are happening in the heavens and earth satan and the kingdom of darkness all right that's why they have power to close to shut the heavens and earth and to call and turn waters to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will that is if anybody standing in their way are troubling them just like you see prophets call Moses call down judgments on Egypt because they wouldn't let God's people go. They have the power to call judgment on anywhere they are. If people are, you know, the leaders or the countries of that land or the people are moving like Harad and Hero, they can call judgments and plagues on any city, any heavens, any earth, you understand? They can call, that's the power that God gave them, that nobody's supposed to disturb them in their testimony. They're going to be covered in sackcloth. That means they're going to be, that mourning, penitence, repenting, humility before God. Where You understand? That's sack, being clothed in sackcloth. They're just talking about the two witnesses. God doesn't like how they just be talking about the two witnesses saying like only that they're going to be shooting fire out out of their mouth and killing their enemies they're not going to be going around doing that if anybody comes to hurt them that does if anyone tries to hurt them and if any man will hurt them he shall in this manner be killed so if anybody tries to hurt them while they're doing their testimony and in the days of their prophecy then they shall be killed in that manner if the city and the people and the rulers of that land are coming up against them, they can call down plagues on the heavens and the earth. They could stop the place from having rain so the crop dries out, that there's no food in the land. They can do call down any judgment they want. You understand? And if people come to attack them while they're saving God, saving the nation, saving the people to get to God in the time of their testimony, then... They can do whatever they want with calling down the plagues, with turning waters to blood, and doing all of that. But that is, their people are not supposed to be troubling them. That in their testimony is is basically a warning. If you try to hurt these people, fire will proceed out of their mouth and devour their enemies. These people are going to be what? 
And I will give power unto my two witnesses that they shall prophesy. They're going to be prophesying. They're going to be teaching the people. They're going to be delivering the people. A thousand and two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth, in repentance, in humility before God. But if anybody tries them while they're in this prophesying to the people, delivering the people to God, then what do they get? They can what? And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they have finished their testimony, so you know they're testifying. All right, let me go after because... It didn't all come here. Forgive me. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and overcome them and kill them. But they're not going to be overcome and they're not going to be killed in the time of their prophecy. When they finished their testimony. So the two witnesses are coming to testify their story to the people, to get people to God. You get me? That is what he wants you to understand. People haven't been speaking about that. They just speak about their power and they can do this. Even your governments and people have been afraid. The church leaders and the religious folks have been afraid. People have been praying against the two witnesses to come and the two witnesses to manifest because they've been afraid to think, oh, they're going to be calling down plagues, burning up people with fire, just going about destroying their enemies. And that is not the case. They're going to be clothed in sackcloth and testifying and bringing souls to God. And when they're finished their testimony, that ha you know what happens to them. Their love story is supposed to change people. All right? And he wants me to read Isaiah chapter 51. This is going to be a long video. And perfect love cast out fear. The, the love that they share between each other is going to cast out all the fear of the beast coming from the bottomless pit and overcoming them, all of that. And their love is going to teach people how to love and show mercy and get people to come back to God. They're going to be testifying. Now, in 1 John 4 and 17, herein, herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world. They're going to be repenting to God. 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. They're going to teach the people peace and love, forgiveness, mercy. And um, the priest, he's going to be a priest. Zechariah 6 and 13. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord. And he shall bear the glory, and he shall sit and rule upon his throne. And, and he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. So love and peace, they're coming to teach the world. Their testimony is going to teach the world that. Now, in, now this is why King David is more about, if you read Psalms 132, it talks about King David... Um, and Z it talks about Zion. It talks about her and the throne. It talks about the two witnesses. If you understand. Now, so back to it with this, the priests. Zechariah 6 and 13. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord. And he shall bear the glory and shit, sit and rule upon his throne. And he shall be a priest upon his throne. And the council of peace shall be between them both. Psalms 132 and 9. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness, and let thy saints shout for joy. For thy servant David's sake, turn not away the face of thy anointed. The Lord has sworn in truth unto David. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne, his daughter Zion. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I, have, that I shall teach them, their children also shall sit upon my throne forevermore. Now let's continue. After 32 and 12. Now it goes on. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. So what does it tell you? What did he tell King David? What did he tell him? He said, For, the, for thy 
da for thy servant David's sake, turn not away the face of thy anointed, for the Lord has sworn in truth unto David. He will not turn away from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I sit, will I set upon thy throne. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony, testimony which I have, which I shall teach them, their children all, shall also sit upon my throne forevermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion. God just told you who He chose of the fruit of God, David's body to sit on David's throne. The Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for His habitation. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provisions. He made, He just told you he chose her, and he just told you I will abundantly bless her provisions. I will satisfy her poor with bread. So you know who God's talking about. He just told you what he's doing. Out of the fruit of David's body, out of his children, he just told you which child he picked. And I will also clothe her priests with salvation, and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. Go back to Zechariah. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and he shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. What did God just tell you? I will abundantly bless her provisions. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her priests with salvation, and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. There will I make the horn of David to bud. I have ordained a lamp for my anointed. Where did God make the horn of David to bud? With Zion who he chosen. For, for the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. He will bless her. So it's a woman. There will I make the horn of David to bud. And then it talks about the priests. I will also clothe her priests with salvation. The brand. Zachariah, if you re watch my other videos about the two witnesses, you'll know. So... That's what God wants me to talk to you about and to read, for you people to read Isaiah 51. Because I can read it to you, but when you're with God, you're going to get more and more understanding the more you read something. Alright? So this is what he wants me to read to you about this. Hearken unto me, ye that follow after righteousness. And then let me get this scripture, because this is just a good scripture to go with this. He is our rock. Deuteronomy. There's another one. But God is our rock, right? For for their rock is not our as our rock. Even our enemies. But I don't know why that scripture is not coming up. Forgive me, people. Anyways, scratch that. Let me just do what God wants me to do. Let me not rear off. Amen. Isaiah 51 and 1 hearken unto me ye that follow after righteousness ye that seek the Lord look unto the rock whence ye are hewn so look to your creator and to the hole of the pit that you are digged look to your creator who made you look unto Abraham your father and unto Sarah that bear, bear you for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him so God's telling you people he called you alone he and he blessed you alone and he's going to increase you alone don't be gathering up with groups with nobody because he called you alone and he's going to bless you alone and he's going to increase you all by yourself for the lord shall comfort zion he will comfort all her waste places and he will make her wilderness like eden and her deserts like the garden of the lord joy and gladness shall be found therein thanksgiving and the voice of medley Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation. For the law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. My righteousness is near, my salvation is gone forth. My arms shall judge the people, the isles shall wait upon me. God's telling you the people in the islands, they're going to wait on him. And on my arm they shall trust, and the people who live in the islands, they're going to trust, they trust God, and they're waiting on him. And they understand the judgments that's going on. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath, for the heavens shall wa vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment. So the two witnesses are supposed to testify to get you out of this earth and this heavens and earth that's going to wax old like a garment. And they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. 
but my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be afraid of their rivalings. For the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool. But my righteousness shall be forever, and my salvation from generation to generation. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in ancient days. All right, so basically, and then down to here. Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Why will sorrow and mourning flee away? It's clothed in sackcloth. They're, right? It's going to go away. Mourning and what is clothed in sackcloth? Mourning and penitence. As I, you understand, the terms refer to ancient Hebrew custom of indicating humility before God by wearing, you understand? It's it's mourning. It's sad. So what did God tell you? The Lord, therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return. The people who, you know, repent to God and come with singing unto Zion and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. I, even I am he that comforts you. Who art thou that thou should be afraid of a man that shall die and the son of men that shall be made as grass and forgets the Lord thy maker, people who forget God, that has stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and has feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor as if he were ready to destroy. He says people fear every day the oppressor like he's going to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? Because God will remove him. The captive exile hastens that he may be loose, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. But I am the Lord thy God, that divides the sea, whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is his name. And I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered thee in the shadow of my hand, that I, that I may plant the heavens, and lay the foundations of the earth, and say to Zion, Thou art my people. Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem. You understand? So this is what God wants you to understand with the two witnesses. And you can read Isaiah chapter 51. And that um, clothed in sackcloth, they're going to be testifying to the people. And if anyone tries to hurt them within that, them testifying, they can do those things that is written. Stay blessed.